I was awakened yesterday morning by a phone call from our custodian's wife, Mrs. Here, at approximately 1.45 a.m. She announced that the church was on fire. At this time, firefighting equipment had not yet arrived, and by 2 a.m. I had left the house and shortly after joined John, the custodian, on the Jones Street side of the building in time to see open flames leaping through the roof of our chapel. Fire companies were on the scene, and tons of water were being poured upon the fire at the center of the blaze. Aided by a strong westerly wind, it was soon evident that the fire could not be contained and the building was doomed. Hot burning embers became airborne and headed downwind in a direct path to Webster House. Firefighters sprayed hoses on both sides of the house and the roof to prevent a double catastrophe. For a time it looked extremely serious, but by good fortune a shift in the wind reduced that danger. By 5 a.m. it was evident that the church was lost. The events leading up to the fire are still largely unknown. John here checked the downstairs after the usual Friday night meeting of the 30 to 60 club, and he left at 12.30 a.m. with all seemingly in good order and at 1 a.m. the Hears received a call from an orchestra member informing them of a fire at the church. She had apparently picked it up on her shortwave radio. During the day after, many offers to use their facilities came in from other inner-city churches. The offer which came from the Church of the Master was accepted, and the first two Sundays following the fire. Church of the Master was established by LABC in 1927, which was a dream of LABC pastor A.W. Bevan. When the main church building was finally built in 1955, they named that sanctuary after Dr. Bevan. On January 16, 1972, the LABC members for worship at 1230 at Church of the Master. By January 25, 1972, the property committee reported this, as a result of high winds, a large portion of two unsupported 70-foot-high masonry stone gables facing Jones Ave and Ambrose Street were blown down into the church building by approximately 8 a.m. And then a report from the next day. Arrangements were made for us to use Central Presbyterian Church for future worship services. This arrangement lasted until September, and it was then necessary for a move to First Presbyterian Church which became available. There they remained until the dedication of the new building in 1975. At the time of the fire, the church was in the process of calling a new senior pastor. The two associates, Roger Francis and Claude Pullis, had been covering pastoral duties since George Hill had left in July of 1971, and on December 1st, the church called Reverend Jack Wilkes as their new senior pastor. The decision was made to publish a newsletter focused on the process of deciding the future of LABC. It was entitled, Smoke Signals. The month of February was spent clearing out what remained of the contents of the education and church building. And then on February 16, 1972, a meeting of church leaders was held in which the following questions were considered. Should the church retain its identity? Should we retain our name? Should we have our own church building? Should we rebuild on the same site? Should we build on another urban site? Should we build on a suburban site? Shall we merge with another church? Shall we minister to the present neighborhood somehow? Shall we make a decision by Easter 1972? Ultimately, the church made the decision to rebuild. By July of 1972, the arson squad of the Rochester Fire Department reported that the fire did not start in either the social hall or the education building, and they requested to be present when debris was removed from other portions of the building to further ascertain cause of the fire, and to date, no final report of the arson squad was found in our archives. By August 17, 1972, the trustees received bids for the demolition of the remaining walls and foundations. The work began that Wednesday, and it would take approximately 20 days and cost $23,000.
the entire area would be filled and seeded. On March 22, 1973, the Building Committee approved the selection of Parks, Morin, Hill, and Brennan to be the architects for the new LABC building, and at the same meeting they approved the selection of the Fred R. Steel Company, Inc. as the general contractors for the project. The total estimated cost of the new buildings would be $1,064,500. That did not include the cost of the organ and parking, which totaled another $60,000. The insurance company ensured that the old building had paid out just in excess of $930,000.